Hi, Gil Robles here, and I wanted to talk on this video about the different approaches that I use to making a gouache painting. There are different approaches basically because there's not one way to approach the subject. You can do different things, tone background, uh, different, uh, either use, uh, you know, heavy, go in heavy and opaque, or go in transparent and build it up and so forth. Now, one of the problems that I have is deciding whether or not I want to work tightly on the drawing or work more spontaneously and more directly with just throwing on the paint and making estimates and guess as to what, what it is that I'm trying to put down at the same time understanding that there are going to be corrections as I go through. Now, what I decided to do because basically the work that I've been doing beforehand recently has bugged me that my drawing was not that correct. So what should I do? Or, or one of the things that also uh, is a struggle for me is to decide how much should I go in for the detail or, 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 or trying to get a realistic look and uh, trying to be spontaneous. I don't want to make it look like I'm copying a photograph even though I'm using a photo reference. I want to also kind of use my knowledge of color, uh, um, my, you know, where, where the photographs can't help me as far as distortions is concerned in the photos. I wanted to also use my ability to draw and to leave out things, um, but none of which are perfect. So I'm going to make mistakes as I go along and uh, correct, uh, correct a lot of things as I go along. So what I try to do was it still winds down to uh, no matter how careful the drawing is, it winds down to the best estimate and then making corrections as you go along. So this line drawing represents my best estimate as far as what I want to put down. Um, as I go along, I'm going to subtract things, add things, change things, uh, uh, but pretty much it's going to stay close to this. And uh, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do with this as I go along. So this was the first step in um, starting this picture where I'm concentrating basically on getting my drawing right. This second step, not all terribly that important or all that accurate. I just wanted to do a quick drawing of all together so it helps me as I go, just kind of a step as I go along in building the drawing and deciding what is important and what's not important. It kind of like looking over the terrain before I go over uh, or looking over a map before I go ahead and proceed to my destination. Now this step is very important because with this step I establish the drawing as well as the values that I'm going to use in the painting that I'm going to, that in the color that, that uh, I'm going to continue in when I start laying down the, the, the colors. And, uh, and in doing this, I also am planning, while I'm doing this, how I'm going to add the color to this. And basically, I decided uh, before this, now this is a, a very old method of doing things. Uh, not necessarily in gray values, but it's it's a grisaille. It's it's in in oil painting. It's called grisaille. I don't know if there's a name for it in watercolor or whatever. But you basically you establish the values in the drawing, and then you apply the color over it. And for some, this may be a kind of boring way of approaching it, because it takes the spontaneity out of it. But it also allows for a great deal of control when you go over and add the color because you've already resolved the drawing and the values you're just adding color and so you're thinking about color you're thinking about warm and cool colors 
and you know whatever have you the where the reflected lights go but that's that's actually that that's already handled here in the values um, so but this was an important step and it and like I said it allows me a great deal of control over the drawing not that the drawing is perfect I'm going to make corrections as I go along as I see things and because when you live with something uh, for a little bit longer you get to see what it is that needs to be corrected what it is that needs to be changed and then you go ahead and do that it's 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 a uh, it's a lot less than you would if you were just doing it directly of course but it's still there so this was an important step before I start adding the color and finally the final step before I go on to the color is that I wanted to add a tone uh, to the background to work on so I took some uh, burnt umber and burnt sienna casein and I put it over as a wash now the black and white was uh, India ink it was a wash drawing done in India ink so it's you know the the water won't lift it up it's, it's a waterproof ink and as, as well as the casein once it dries it's waterproof and with a thin layer it's it's a nice surface for me to work on that I feel like the 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 the, the, the surface absorbs the the gouache paint a bit and it, 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 I, I like building up the paint on the cake on top of the casein so I prepared the surface with with the a, a, a brown wash that I would use as a base to build my colors on now I'm ready to sit down and start painting and uh, so my setup is kind of small over here basically because this is the area I use to record and I'm starting out with my palette what I have here for my gouache paints is a, a, a palette that basically keeps the colors moist for an extended period of time now they, they also kind of uh, uh, dry up after a while but it's easy to reanimate with some water and uh, I can use the paint some people don't like to do this they like to use the paint fresh out of the tube I don't mind it's the way I've worked with gouache since high school so this doesn't particularly bother me if I need fresher paint I can always squeeze out more but this has always worked for me and this will work especially for right now where I'm building up the, the the painting with washes of color rather than going in thick as well and after a while it's, I, I don't know whether it's the particular colors that I choose because I like choosing colors that stay moist for long periods of time so what happens is that when I reanimate it it's easier for me to get them back to that um, that that uh, consistency that I like and the palette is set up a specific way if you look at it I have the black and white separated as far as I can from each other uh, but in between that there are the warm colors on the top and once I'm done squeezing in the warm colors going from burnt umber to uh, Naples yellow there's uh, I start in with putting down the, the blues and the greens the cooler colors so I separate my I've always done that again since high school uh, usually and when I set up an oil paint a palette of oils is I put the white in between and on one side of the white is uh, the, the the warm colors on the other side of the, of the white are the cool colors and that's how I separate my colors and so I know exactly where to look for them so that's the palette of colors that I use and from here on in I am going to build up the um, build up my color, build up my, my my painting using washes of color. Now this is slow going. This isn't. And before I speed this video up because it's it's a lot of time that I spend on this, but I just want to uh, put it in, uh, put let you see how I work in real time so that you see that I'm not going terribly fast or anything like that and, and I think the, while it's useful to speed up videos it can be deceptive in thinking that uh, you know 
uh, you, that the, the artist is putting down these colors very very fast and then the paint is in and, and it takes no time to build up the image but uh, in actuality it took me about two to three hours to 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 complete this painting and then even after i i've uh i've done that i i've touched it up i've gone back into it i've made changes and so forth uh because there are little tweaks that that want you know especially once I scan the, the the final thing in, and I look at the and I look at the scan, I see problems in the drawing and so forth. Or if I take the painting because I'm holding it flat on the surface in order to on on the 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 desk the surface of the desk in order to uh, in order to film this. But in actuality, it's much easier for me to have the painting uh, at a slant or as close to it being like on an easel as I could because then I can see the painting front on and not not kind of a uh, uh, not kind of in this 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 flat where I can't see the painting all at once because I'm seeing it in perspective and, and you know even though it, it doesn't look a, as such um, but I'm, I'm not seeing the 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 the, the painting head on when I have it flat on the surface like this I would much rather prefer to have it on an easel where it's easier for me to see the whole thing and then measure and 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 check my proportions and check the access of the the, the, the eyes and so forth to make sure everything lines up now I, I dealt with that in the drawing so I don't have to worry about that so much here but still as I work it still becomes a problem so it's uh, uh, you know as I as I look at it when I'm done painting for the day I kind of lift it up and, and and see what corrections I need to make so but gouache is very forgiving gouache you can especially when you're painting this way where you're building up the color uh, you can you can make whatever changes you want because of the opacity of the medium. So I'm going to try and and make the hair uh, pretty much a shape and not go into too much detail as far as that is concerned. So that uh, rather the shape would do and and that's all that matters there um, to 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 tell the story. And the rest of it, I'm going to try and figure out how much detail I want to put in. There's a pattern to her shirt that is basically a white uh, blouse, but um, I don't want to draw. I don't want to draw the pattern. I want to suggest it and uh, and see how it goes from there. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this video up and uh, let you watch the painting progress.
So this is my second day of uh, working on this painting. Uh, apart from the time I put in to do the initial drawing and the initial uh, wash and, and all those steps before I started the color. So this is actually my second day of applying the color, but not the second day of uh, working on this. It's been about three three days now of uh, doing this, uh, this small painting. Uh, but you can see that on the hair I indicated in white where I need to come back in and make that correction on the hair because it extended too far out so when I paint in the background I'm going to go ahead and and uh, correct that and as I go as as I go along so right now I'm continuing to do what I did uh, when I was painting the face and that is to go back into uh, into the, the the painting with these uh, washes of color but you can see as as I went on with these washes well initially it seemed like it was just very very thin paint the paint built up after a time and so now there's thicker paint on here there's enough paint so that if I just add water I can move around the paint that was that's already on this uh, just in, in, in the areas of the face mostly where I can just move around the paint with just water and smoothen out areas or go back into areas and, 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 and make whatever corrections with just with just water but um, again I'm continuing to apply the paint to make corrections as I go along and uh, to uh, um, continue to paint now uh, I haven't talked about the brushes. I've talked about my palette and the way I set it up, but I haven't talked about the brushes. They, they aren't very, very special brushes. The only difference is in, in mainly is uh, size and the, the, the hairs of the brush. This is they, These are synthetic brushes. I have real sable brushes. I, I use them mostly for watercolor, but for gouache, the synthetic brushes do. And uh, this is a synthetic uh, um, sable brush. So, but what I use it for, it's it's thin, so I use it obviously for small smaller details and so forth. But at the same time, it you know it has a little spring. Now, this uh, green brush that I'm grabbing, this is a synthetic squirrel brush, and it is it doesn't have the spring that that. Um, that the, the 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 sable brush does but what it does has it is that the it holds a lot of paint and holds a lot of water and um what happens also is that it, it's it, it because it's not springy it's good for laying down washes of color especially when i'm painting over things and i don't want to disturb uh the the paint underneath too much because the paint is is the the paint i mean i'm sorry the the, the hairs on the brush are very very soft um, I'm not moving around too much paint as I would if I was painting with the sable brush so uh, that's what uh, I use that for and basically those are the big differences the size of the brush and the softness of the hair and how much water it holds and so forth the sable brush can, can hold water they all can hold water obviously uh, and uh, pigment but this uh, uh, squirrel brush I like because it holds a lot more and at the same time it, it goes on in a way where I can I, I cannot I don't have to worry about disturbing too much the paint underneath it does and it does pull paint but less so than if you were using the the, um, the, the, the synthetic sable brush so again I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and let you watch the painting as it develops.
So what I started doing here, and uh, I got my hands messy a little bit here. You'll see it on my um, my right hand there. Uh, but I started to mix a color for the background. I I put some uh, pale blue wash initially, but uh, I wanted something that would show up better. And uh, one of the things that I've actually learned from this, and it's not so important be, uh, for the painting so much as it is for reproduction. Uh, for the painting itself, my belief is that um, when you view art, art is, is an experience, and um, you're really not viewing the artwork uh, in the reproduction. Unless the artwork is specifically made for reproduction, you're not viewing it at the best advantage. And, and uh, even when it's made for reproduction, a lot of times it's so much more impressive when you see the artwork in you know in in actuality uh but um still it, you know sometimes when it's made for reproduction the artwork actually looks better in the reproduction so it it, it really just depends but i'm not thinking about reproduction when i'm painting something like this i'm thinking more or less about just uh just making you know, just what's in front of me and making this painting work but that being said, this blue that I'm putting down was very, very difficult to get when I scanned the painting in so that I could not get the colors as accurately as I wanted to. While it's much easier to do with, with, with and, and although it's not exacting with the face and, and, and the other areas that I painted, but as far as the background was concerned, it was very, very difficult for me to pick up on that blue because it did not show up in the scanner. Now there's certain colors like blue, uh, certain I guess the cooler colors, but I know specifically blue that it's very difficult to reproduce. So if you're doing a, a painting and you're worried about reproduction, one of the things that I would consider is uh, what colors are you using, and especially if you're going to use blue. Uh, the, 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 the further away I believe you get from the cyan where it becomes more of a, a purple or like ultramarine blue and so forth the better you'll be because uh, those colors have a bit of red in them so it'll it, I don't know how accurately it will reproduce in the end but at least it would be a lot better than actually doing um just something closer to the cyan where it's very very difficult to reproduce and that makes sense because i, I know that when you know uh, when artists draw especially for comic books and stuff like that some of them use a non-reproducible blue pencil in order to work out the layouts and so forth so that the blue won't show up when you once you ink the the drawing in black and and you you scan it the, the blue won't, it's easy to get rid of, it won't show up. So that being said, uh, when the final, when I show you the final uh, painting, it's not as accurate as, as I would have liked it to be. But uh, again, I'm going to speed up this video. It is more of the same where I am touching up and, and, and going on. You see that, uh, just to mention before I do that, is that I went back into the hair when I when I painted it the back when I painted in the background. Now also, it might be a good idea that as I'm working on it, I did give some indication of the color that I wanted for the background, which was a blue, and you see it show up in the reflected light in her face, on on her jaw, and in uh, on her on her. Um, on her right side I believe yeah on her right side um, for us it would be on our left side you see that there's like purplish in her face and that's the reflected light from the blue background but so I did know I wanted that blue so I was able to go on and 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 paint the paint uh, the rest of the, the work her, her the, the figure with that in mind but at the same time when I'm when developing a painting it's better to uh, put in the background, uh, I know some artists actually 
put in the background first around what they are what they're going to paint so that they have an idea of the colors that 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 will be incorporated in the figures or the portraits and so forth from what you lay down in the background um uh, I, as i said i had some indication by that pale blue wash so i had an idea but um, I didn't have an idea of the final one until I, I, I laid it in just now. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to speed this up. It is uh, finishing up now, okay? So after all that time, this is the final painting. Now, as I said, the blue was kind of hard to get. So it, it actually appears flatter on the painting and not as um, not this particular shade of blue, but this was closer to it, as close to it as I can get. And it's a little bit streaky too. Now, I'm, I'm sort of satisfied with the painting. Then at, at the same time, uh, I see I, I always kind of reevaluate what I did and think of ways to do this even better. And like I said, I, in the beginning, I sacrificed some spontaneity for, uh, you know, for, for the correct drawing. And, it, and, and even in that, the correct drawing wasn't completely satisfied in this. Um, it, I did give it my best effort. But even after giving it my best effort, I always see things that I want to uh, consider for the next painting, things that I can do better, uh, things that I need to pay attention to, and so forth. And also things that I can tweak and change to, uh, to, 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 to just expand upon this and make it even better. I think that, um, like I said, this is just one method of going at it and I will use this method from time to time at the same time I would also like to paint more directly and uh, develop the painting that way um, but uh, I, I like having this control and it, it, it's kind of good to keep in mind uh, for, for, for when I feel like the subject calls for it at the same time, I, I, I recognize that I lose some of the freshness and the spontaneity when I'm not painting it directly. But all in all, it was a good experience and anything that I can learn from is a good experience. And I did learn from making this painting and I'm not dissatisfied totally with the painting. Um, I kind of like it. I, 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 I acknowledge that that was even with the changes that I feel like I need to make, it was an honest effort and it was the best I could do at the time, which is all you can ask yourself. If there are things to change and correct, that's a good thing because it means that you, you, you're not staying at one spot. You're pushing yourself to do better than you're able to. So I don't, I, I, you know, some people think of this as negative when I, when I criticize my own work, but I don't think I'm being negative and I don't think I'm being down on myself. 
I recognize that this is the best that I can do at the moment, but I want to do even better. And I look forward to painting again because the experience of painting for me is, uh, I don't know how to say it entirely, uh, because it, it, like the outcome is part of the experience and you want to walk away with a good painting. But even if you don't, the experience is worthwhile and it's enough to carry you to the next one. So, and when there is a next one and when I make, a, make another video, I will be back to show you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye-bye.